friends welcome to the pharma talkers today we are going to discuss about the important chapter from the subject of pharmaceutics that is parental here we discuss about the small bit that is introduction to the parental in introduction slides first of all what is what are the parental a simple definition is that the parental are the injectable preparation which are injected to the skin or mucous membrane and they are directly goes to the blood stream the main criteria or the main two criteria for the parenterals are these are should be sterile one and these are only these are pyrogen free in case of sterile we know that sterile because if it is sterile if the parenterals are not sterile then they goes to the internal body and produces the infection that's why we need to the sterile one and second one is the pyrogen free first of all what is the pyrogen pyrogens are the product of metabolism of microorganism the microorganism includes it may be bacteria or it may be virus the primary primarily the uh, primarily the pyrogens are proteins or mainly carbohydrate or it may be proteins or peptides this the pyrogen which is prepared from the gram negative bacteria these are very harmful to the body okay and we know that the parenter shows the very rapid onset action rapid onset of action as compared to the other route of administration or other other route of administration oral okay coming to the next slide these are the some common routes of administration of parenterals such as subcutaneous intramuscular intraspinal intravenous and intracutaneous that is intradermal and in right side the maximum volume injected in case of subcutaneous routes of administration we should not we cannot be inject more than the 1 ml in intramuscular not more than 2 ml in intraspinal not more than 10 ml in intravenous here large volume can be given and intracutaneous cutaneous it is also called as intradermal here the dose should not be more than 0.2 ml here only iv route may give large volume because these are give safety and careful control careful and control of the rate of administration the ophthalmic preparation are formulated in the same way as parenteral solution the formulation which are used for same having minimum irritation coming to the next slides these are the pictorial diagram or the intramuscular subcutaneous intravenous intradermal this is a common diagram in which the intramuscular the we can give the injection to the deltoid muscle and luteal muscle these are two common injection site for the intramuscular do, uh, intramuscular in case of intravenous we know where it given and that is medial basalic vein okay and third in case of subcutaneous we are giving to the subcutaneous and finally intradermal these are also called as diagnostic injection in coming to the next slide the isotonic isotonicity for the parenterals is the most characteristics for the intraspinal injection and iv injection because in intraspinal in, in spinal cord when we injected to the intraspinal injection these injection are directly goes to the cerebrospinal fluid which is present in that and these fluid have very low movement if we given intraspinal injection and having non isotonic solution it should be disturbance the osmotic flux that's why we need the isotonicity but isotonicity is a not important criteria for the subcutaneous route and intramuscular route and here we also discussed that it is intradermal or intracutaneous injection that are primarily used for the diagnostic purpose the uh, the another criteria is that when we injected the drug this should be in solution form 
or when we injected the doses form these should be in solution form if it is not or if it is in suspension form it should be avoided because when we suspension is injected in our vein then the suspension containing solid particles they block the small capillaries which are present in the body that's why there should be chance of inflammation is happen in and in the case of the solid content the which are which are present in parietal suspension that are usually ranges between the 0.5 to 5% coming to the next slide that is ophthalmic preparation these ophthalmic preparation that are formulated as the same way as parental solution and have many similar and identical characteristics but in case of parenteral the pyrogen free is the most criteria but here not a criteria that the solution containing pyro the solution must be pyrogen free but for the our convenience we must be kept uh, or avoid the pyrogens also isotonicity is the very important criteria as as like our parenterals and this preparation that required buffer to stabilize the ph of the product in coming to the next slides freeze dried product first of all what is the freeze drying the of the freeze drying is the process in which we can stabilize the product this stabilization of product can be done by three steps first of all freezing second one is primary drying and third one is second drying here the primary role of that freeze dried product is to stabilize the product how it can be stabilized we can uh, quote here one example that if the solution is present or suspension is present for that for that the aqueous phase for used for this uh, solution or suspension these show microbial contamination due to this the product should be non sterile and this is not not acceptable for the parental here we that's why we need the freeze dried product the first step which are used in freeze drying is first freezing what is happen in the freezing first of all in freezing step the solute and solvent which are present in the solution that should be separated in freezing in primary drying the solvent which are present they are converted into ice and sublimate in the primary drying and in case of second drying the unbound water which are present in the product that should be removed and also when the freeze dried freeze drying is completed then whatever maybe cake is formed they that cake should be reconstituted at the time of use here the percentage of the solid which are used in freeze drying is the concentration between 2 and 2 to 25% similar to cry protectant here we are going to use lye protectant the commonly used lye protectants are inulin trihalose sucrose lactose these are commonly used in lye protectant but one of the major disadvantage is that the substance which are the non volatile the substance which are non volatile these substance can be used for this freeze drying not volatile substance or volatile substance that are not be used for the freeze drying and freeze drying also stabilize the protein and peptide here we can see the uh, diagram of freeze drying this is this is the diagram of freeze drying in next case long acting formulation long acting formulations are designed to provide the slow sustained release of the drug over prolonged time of over prolonged period of time there should be a three approaches for the long acting formulation first is a dissolution control second is a binding of drug molecule to the adsorbent and third is the encapsulation in case of dissolution control the rate of drug absorption is controlled by the slow dissolution of drug particle with the subsequent release of the tissue fluids surrounding to the the uh, bolus of product of the tissue here the formation of drug salt with very low aqueous solubility is one of the most common approach to the this type of formulation and in second case binding of drug molecule to the absorbent here 
uh, only the free portion in equilibrium that the free portion which are there at that side at the side these can be bound as the drug is absorbed a shift is equilibrium is established and in case of third that is encapsulation here we can use biodegradable and bioadsorbable micromolecules such as gelatin phospholipids and long chain fatty acid these types of uh, ingredient or excipient used for the diffusion matrix of the drug these are three approaches for the long term long acting formulation coming to the next slide that is suspension here the main important point is that the solid content how much the solid content in the parenterals are in range between 0.5 to 5 percent but it may be increases up to the 30 percent in case of antibiotics the syringeability is the most important factor or most in important problem for the preparation of suspension what is mean by syringeability when we are given a solution as uh, sorry suspension into the injection to apply force on the syringe there should be no there should be uh, by acting force there should be the product should not be passed through the syringe these are the problem for this is called as syringe ability and this is due to the antithesotropic property for that here in suspension the surface active agent are used for the preparation and stabilization because this, these types of agent that reduce the interaction tension between drug and vein the commonly ex common example of surface active agents are polysorbate 18, lecithin and emulfor coming to the next slide for it is an important criteria that suspension which are going to use that should be small uniform size uniform particle size for this for this reduced part for this reduction we need some technique that are dry bone milling wet bone milling micropolarization fluid energy grinding ultrasonification and splittering all these method that reduces the particle size of suspension coming to the next slide that is classification there are mainly two types of classification based on volume and based on the state of product according to USP. Based upon volume, first is small volume parenterals and second one is large volume parenterals and based on the state of product that is uh, contain five subtypes that is solution or emulsion of medicament, dry solids or liquid concentrate without additives, dry solid or liquid concentrate with additives, suspension of solid not for IU or intraspinal use, dry solid on reconstruction without suspension. Thank you. For more videos, you can log on www.arotobot.com.